Uh, and now to the SCI Hall of Fame. And be before presenting uh, the first of the 2007 inductees, I want to call your attention to all 24 of the 2005 and 2006 inductees. They are listed in your program. And we also want to acknowledge a number of federal government officials who are here with us tonight. Uh, joining us tonight are Ali Cantos, Associate uh, Director of, on Disabilities of the White House Domestic Policy Council, uh, Larry Rafi, <laughs> Executive Director of the U.S. Access Board, Michael Collins, Executive Director of the National Council on Disability, Dr. Stephen Tingus, Deputy Assistant Secretary, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Maggie Rafi, Business Development Specialist, U.S. Department of Labor, Office of Disability Employment Policy, and Lieutenant General Russell L. Honore, Commander of the First Army. Let's give them all a hand. And now, with that, for our first category, Pat Mayer will come back and uh, present the voter's choice. Pat. We all need to do this. I feel like we're looking at sheet music. Yeah. Uh, the first category in the third annual SCI Hall of Fame is for assistive technology. For achievement in the field of assistive technology, the nominees are Dean Kamen, Mark Lohr, Stephen W.J. Seeger, and Lisa Wather. And I made a brief faux pas here, but I didn't make it completely. <laughs> and the 2007 inductee is Dean Kamen. Dean, I'm going to provide a brief bio of you. Dean has dedicated his life to developing technologies that help people lead better lives. An inventor and physicist, he holds more than 200 patents, many of which are for innovative medical devices that have expanded the frontiers of healthcare worldwide. For his unique contributions and exceptional contributions, we salute Dean Kamen and welcome him gladly into the SCI Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. Giving me a microphone is a dangerous thing to do. Um, I probably only should take a minute. There's a lot of people that need to be recognized. and. Uh, I have a feeling one of the groups that will not be recognized here really should be. You know, I have a, a company full of very passionate people. We get to work on projects that really can change people's lives. We get to do challenging projects. We get, when we succeed, we get this kind of great recognition. It gives us passion to do more. So we're the winners. We have all the fun. I thank you for that, but there's, there's a particular group that in this case has really helped us from literally the beginning. They very rarely, I think, get any recognition. And we now live in a pretty cynical world where people don't trust government, people don't trust big business. But Johnson & Johnson, from the time I showed them this technology, knew what it could do for people. But they knew, frankly, and fortunately, it's a pretty small group when you look at cancer or diabetes, heart disease, the number of people, fortunately, that need an iBot is pretty small. The development time and the development cost they knew would be huge. But from the top down, from Bill Weldon, their chairman, on down, we have Sandy Salerno here from J&J. &J. For more than 10 years, they've helped us do this because they know, although it's a small group of people that need it, if you're one of those people, it's all that matters. So we've had their support. 
We've made it real. They've made it possible. We've gotten it through the FDA. They're available now. And on behalf of all the people that might someday use this, I'd like to thank Johnson & Johnson and Sandy. So, thank you. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen, man. <laughs> that is the kind of corporate citizenship we could sure stand to see a lot more of. I, I, I also add my congratulations to Johnson & Johnson.